Severe storms have a very specific look sometimes. And that's what we're going to talk about. How to tell the difference between whether this storm is severe or not. Well, we're going to do all that right after this. Normal storms versus severe storms. There's a difference. I mean, clearly there's a difference, right? And you can usually tell whether an environment is supportive of severe storms or not simply by the appearance of the storm. We're gonna talk about all those visual cues. And also we're gonna talk about lowerings a little bit today because I think that's also important to discern what's a very severe lowering that you need to pay attention to or something that's a little less ominous. We're gonna do all that. Okay, you ready? Let's get started. Now, the first thing to really kind of judge a storm by, like how strong is this storm? This seems, this seems oddly way too obvious, but it is a way, the size. A smaller storm, perfectly capable of producing severe weather, like this one or this one, both were producing very large hail. Now, granted, both of these storms also were in an environment that was sheared. And we're going to talk about that in just a second, but the size of a storm is a very important aspect of it because bigger storms tend to have stronger downdrafts. They tend to have uh, more bulk, uh, more, more, you know, to make things happen. So the, the bigger storms, well, these are the ones you actually want to pay attention to a little bit more, unless there's a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere, which, well, let's talk about how you can find that out right now. Now, determining whether there's a lot of wind shear in the atmosphere, is well it's it's kind of an interesting uh thing because you can typically tell when there's a lot of shear in the atmosphere two things you can tell first off as the towers go up are they tilting over a tower tilts over because the winds aloft are stronger than the winds at the surface and when this is happening storms are going to tilt over this is vertical wind shear this is speed shear this means you've got shear in the environment and so storms are going to have a better chance of organizing and doing that thing they do. Another way to tell, do you have good directional shear or not, actually can be achieved visibly as well, simply by looking at what might be low clouds in the atmosphere and what direction they're moving mixed with high clouds in the atmosphere. Some days you can tell this before storms even form where you have clouds racing north right above the surface, probably because of the low level jet, and aloft you see cirrus moving east. That means you've got some turning of the winds with height and thus, well, guess what? You've got wind shear. If you do see signs of wind shear in the atmosphere like this, you know you got an environment ripe for severe weather. And also, another thing to keep in mind with this is that wind shear doesn't necessarily mean severe weather is likely. It depends on instability, et cetera. But you do know that the ingredients are at least somewhat in place for that. Another thing to keep an eye out for is when a storm is up, a storm is making its presence known, uh, two things. If it sculpts out, you know it's rotating. You, you, it looks like this or this, you know the storm is rotating. Also, if you see the vault, and this, this is a great visual manifestation of that, where there's a separation between the updraft and the precip area, you know that updraft is really powerful. You know it is so strong, in fact, that it's actually pushing precipitation away from it. And that storm is almost certainly severe. So there's a couple of visual cues to kind of tell. Hey, we're midway through this video. I'm gonna do that annoying thing and ask you to subscribe, enable notifications, like this video, do all those things. I know you love when we do this, but please do all those things. Now let's get back to learning. Now to quickly break down storm lowerings. We've got a lot of great videos on this on the channel, but I wanna spend a moment on this video to kind of talk about it because we're talking about visual clues of severity. Now. Wall clouds and shelf clouds, two types of lowerings you're going to see underneath a storm because you're going to see lowerings that are uh, cloud areas that are lower than the ambient base like this, okay? Sometimes you can have a wall cloud and a shelf cloud very close together, especially on supercells because you'll have shelf clouds wrapping around the uh, backside of the mezzo. We're going to talk about all that a little bit later, some of that stuff, but just know the general rule is if a, if a lowering is sloping down and towards the precipitation area, it's an inflow feature, which means it's a wall cloud, which means it's potentially dangerous. If, an, if that same type of look is sloping down and away from the precipitation area, it's a shelf cloud. It's an outflow feature. It is a sign that that cool, moist air is rushing outwards and meeting the warm, moist air. 
Could mean you have damaging winds on the other side for sure, but it's not as serious of a thing, although they can be pretty. Another thing to keep in mind is wall clouds are typically smaller. They're not going to cover the whole horizon. If a cloud covers the whole horizon that looks lowered and mean, that's probably a shelf cloud, means you got damaging winds possibly coming on the other side of that, definitely a big drop in temperatures, okay? So there's a couple of ways to kind of tell. Now, how do you know if a wall cloud is dangerous? Well, here's a pro tip. First off, almost every storm is going to produce a wall cloud or a lowering of some sort during its life cycle. Almost always. There's always something there underneath the cloud that lets you see whether, you know, you, you see a lowered area. A wall cloud that's dangerous will be doing three things. The first one is it's going to have persistent and increasing upward motion into it. Especially on that right side, you're gonna see that upward motion really increasing. That means the updraft is sucking in air progressively stronger and also doing that tilting and stretching, which allows the mesocyclone to rotate faster in the lower levels. The other thing it's gonna be doing, it's gonna have a persistent area of rotation. And that area is going to be persistently in one area. It's not gonna be bouncing around. It's gonna be persistently somewhere. And we're talking in the order of minutes, not seconds. And also that area is going to be increasing for the third area. If it's dangerous, if it's tornado time, that wall cloud is going to have rotation that is persistently increasing with time. And another thing that you can know, like visually you'll know whether this wall cloud is dangerous. If you see those wrapping rain bands, that usually means the RFD is working around clear slots, something like that. We're gonna talk about all that a little, a little later. You know this wall cloud's dangerous. You know it might be tornado time. So just so you know, lowerings, not uncommon. Wall clouds, not uncommon. Dangerous wall clouds though, very uncommon, but also pretty obvious if you know what you're looking for. So hey, I hope this video, I hope you learned something because when you are looking at lowerings, when you're looking at a storm, there are definitely those visual cues. And oftentimes a storm that looks like this is going to be severe. Now, there are a few tells for like when a storm is not severe. If you see a, lot, a big, huge Wells mouth feature and the gust front is way ahead of the storm, that storm could be severe, but it's gonna be marginally severe. If the storm's smaller, single cell, the rain's falling back through the updraft, all those things, those are all signs that a storm is probably not as severe as, it, as a storm that looks like this, right? So I hope this video got you down the right roads. We're gonna have a lot more, in fact, there's the video popping up right now. Remember, weather is for everybody. That includes you. We'll see you next time. <music>